I'd like to have everybody take a few seconds to begin by first thinking of some of the greatest moments they've ever had in their life, some of the, the most happiness, the happy um, experiences they've ever had. Now I'd like to have you think about a few experiences that have caused you a lot of sorrow, a lot of sadness, things that have maybe not gone so well and what you've been able to learn from them. Now I'm no scholar or anything, but I think it'd be safe to say um, that the good definitely overruled the bad. Um, there was definitely things that you were able to learn that we do learn from the good as well as the bad that we can take away and implement in our lives. Now I want to start by telling you that there are things, there's a problem in the world right now, namely in America, that is causing people all around us to experience the same sorrow, the sadness um, that, that we don't enjoy every single day and there's not much that, that's happening right now to overcome that problem, to make a change with that problem. I'm going to be talking today about the opioid crisis in America. I'm going to be speaking of how big of a problem it is, hoping to inform you of, of the harmful side effects of using them, both short-term, both long-term, um, as well as um, some, some shocking statistics that I hope can really make a change and, and ultimately hoping to help us get to a point where we can um, make a change and strive to make a change and put an end to this problem. Now I'd like, as I mentioned before, I'd like to speak of the short-term and long-term effects. Um, first and foremost, we know that death, death is something that none of us like. <laughs> um, we all try, strive to live our day and, you know, being safe and avoiding death. Um, it's a part of life, but nobody deserves to, to you know, leave this world that way by struggling with an opioid addiction and ultimately result, that ultimately really results in death. Um, 113 people die every single day just in America due to opioid abuse and overdose. Uh, this is a real problem that, that we can make a change with. Um, there's some short-term effects that I'm going to be speaking of, and, and some of them are, you know, their day-to-day -day, um, effects that lead into these long-term effects. But speaking of the short-term effects, people experience unconsciousness, they're passing out, um, drowsiness, um, shortness of breath, but one of the scarier ones is comas. People are going into comas because of this problem. Now, going into long-term effects, um, Suicide. People are killing themselves because of the low that they experience coming off of opioids. Um, some of the other long-term effects are um, death, as I mentioned, as well. But um, these are just huge problems. And the opioids that people are abusing every single day are causing these huge short-term and long-term effects. And one of the biggest long-term effects is organ damage. These are chemicals, these are, um, pharmacies are, are creating these chemicals that have these effects on our bodies, and ultimately, they're not good. Now, I want to speak of some of the staggering statistics that might, that I hope will put this huge problem into perspective for you. Now, I think that there's about 30 days of the year that I really, really look forward to. Um, six of them or so are you know the holidays like christmas and thanksgiving stuffing yourself big belly stuffing yourself with thanksgiving dinner um christmas dinner and whatnot halloween but there's about 24 of them that i love and i'm guessing you love too you probably don't know what they are but i'm going to tell you it's payday you know most of us get paid bi-weekly so there's about 24 of them uh, a year now every single one of us love money now i want to tell you this and I hope this makes, um, kind of puts things into perspective for you. On average, just from your tax dollars that come out, when you get a paycheck and you look on the back, you look at your pace, your paycheck and, and the pay stub, you can see the amount that went towards taxes. And taxes are great, you know, and, and that's not what this is. This is about, you know, taxes, you know, they serve a purpose. 
Um, but out of those tax dollars, 76.5 billion, billion with a B, 76.5 billion dollars annually goes towards funding the opioid crisis. And that means paying the law enforcement, paying the hospital bills for people overdosing, um, everything that has to do with the opioid crisis, $76.5 billion is going towards that. And like I said, I'm no scholar, but I do believe that that money could be put towards other things through taxes that could be better. If we could make a stop you know, and make a change and put an end to this opioid crisis, there'd be a lot more money, $76.5 billion, put towards other good things. And like the reason I shared that is because I love money. I think all of us love money and that should be something that should motivate us to be better. The next statistic I want to speak of how big of a problem this really is. Um, in 2016, it was, it was reported that um, 216 million prescriptions were written for opioids. And, and you know, a lot of those are good. You know, people get hurt and, and those serve a purpose. Uh, but 216 million prescriptions were written. So that means coming, you know, putting that into perspective, that's about two out of every three people. You're walking in through the grocery store. If you pick three people, on average, two thirds of them, 67%, are using opioids. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but that's just, you know, I hope that puts that in, into perspective of how many people are using, not necessarily abusing, but using opioids every single day. Now, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I like to drive fast. Sometimes I speed. I'm no per. I'm not perfect. But one thing I do, I will tell you, if I speed, if I'm going five miles an hour over the speed limit, I'm not going to drive up to the next cop I see and say, "Hey, officer, uh, I was speeding." Nobody. We're human beings. We don't like to admit fault. We don't like to to you know pay consequences for our mistakes. And although going over the speed limit's a problem, I don't go out and openly admit that to everybody. The, what I'm trying to get at is it was reported in 2016 that 11 million people, Americans, admitted to abusing these opioids. Now, if only 11 million of these people um, admitted to it, I'm guessing, like I said, I'm no scholar, but I'm guessing it was probably higher in all reality it was probably higher than 11 million. If only 11 million people admitted to it, there was still probably more than 11 million people because if you're abusing opioids or drugs, you're not gonna come out and say, hey, hey, you know, I have a confession to make, I was abusing opioids. So I think that it's safe to say that there's more than 11 million. However, that is a statistic that I hope can, you know, like I said before, put that into perspective and make a difference and inform you on this problem. Now, the last point I want to speak of is a resolution. This isn't a persuasive speech, this is an informative speech, and I want to inform you and hope to allow you and encourage you to um, be able to inform others of possible solutions. Uh, like I said before, I'm not saying opioids are bad. Opioid abuse is bad. Oftentimes, a lot of people turn towards opioids and I just want to inform you of some other things that might be a better alternative. Um, I think the biggest example, I think the best way to make a difference in the world is to be an example. We all have people that we look up to, people that we idol after, you know, people that, that we really envy and are great idols and examples to us. And a lot of times they don't even really do huge miraculous things to cause us to, to have them be our examples. It's more of just the small things. And I think that that's the number one thing that will make a difference in the world. I think that by us being examples to others, you know, showing people that we care, showing people that we love them, showing people that we're aware of, of their situations and are there to help them, possibly encouraging them to find better alternatives, possibly exercise, um, meditation, you know, there's, there's other things that people can do um, to rather than uh, using opioids, which oftentimes leads to abusing opioids. So all in all, I think that this is a huge problem. I know that this is a huge problem, and I hope that through the statistics that I shared with you, 
through the different, you know, through my words and, and the examples that I used and me personally having experienced it, not directly by abusing it, but by immediate family members, I hope that the words I shared with you today encouraged you to um, become more informed on how big of a problem this is. And I hope that we can move forward every single day um, trying to find ways to be an example to others, recognizing that we don't know exactly what they're going through, and ultimately finding a way to be an example, to encourage, and to, you know, as I mentioned before, lead by example to ultimately put an end to this problem and to this crisis. Thank you.